The career that made Walter Brennan perhaps the most successful motion picture character actor and even a star began almost by accident before the First World War. He was born July 25, 1894 in Massachusetts. His father was an engineer and fully intended for his son to stay in the same profession, and so he duly enrolled him in 1914 in a technical school in Cambridge. Now, this school was actually a prep school for MIT. His father didn't count on there being an amateur acting society at the school, and he became really involved in that. He did very well at the school, but he found himself preoccupied with his extracurricular activities of being at the acting club. The trouble was that he didn't know how to tell his father that he'd rather spout off lines than become an engineer. The First World War solved the dilemma temporarily. As soon as the United States became involved in the war, he enlisted. He served for two years in France. When he arrived home again, he delayed his professional acting debut again by working as a financial reporter for a newspaper in Boston, but finally he decided to take the plunge and jump feet first into the fire. He was aided by his fiancée, Ruth Wells. He finally mustered up the nerve to tell his family and hers that he had big dreams of going to Hollywood. Neither of the families was pleased, and the girl's father declined to bless the forthcoming marriage. They were married anyway, and he headed to California in the early 1920s. He had an old touring car that ran pretty well, but was pretty sketchy as far as a roof goes. During a rainstorm, he was caught with the top flapping and the side curtains coming loose, and an extra gust of wind ripped the top open on the driver's side. He knew that his new wife was a keeper when she stuck an umbrella up through the rip and opened it up, and away they went again. He felt they were straight out of a comedy film when they did this. Things didn't get better too quickly when the young couple arrived in Hollywood. He was thrown into a town that was full of hopeful actors. He ended up joining the long lines outside the casting offices, and there he made the acquaintance of a young Montanan named Gary Cooper, who was having the same kind of trouble. He finally got a break at one of these casting calls when a donkey refused to bray. He had just made a fruitless call to a casting director and saw a film crew trying to get a bray out of a donkey. He offered to actually produce the sound himself, but he would only do it if he got a bit part in the film. The director agreed gladly, and he admitted his first on-screen characterization. It was a hee-haw. He felt like that kind of set the tone for the rest of his work. He worked after that from time to time in a series of motion pictures, but the parts stayed small, sometimes no more than a wordless fall from a running horse. His real breakthrough in film acting came with the 1935 role in The Wedding Night, which won him a long-term contract with MGM. This role led to a piece of luck that actually didn't seem like luck at the time, but led to a fantastic career as a character actor. He was taking part in a fight scene when another actor kicked him in the face and all his teeth were knocked out. He had to have false teeth made and wore false teeth the rest of his life. He looked normal when he was off the set, but when it was necessary, he could take them out and suddenly he would look 40 years older. Throughout his career, he was frequently called to play characters considerably older than he was. The loss of his teeth in the accident, his rapidly thinning hair, his thin build, all made him seem older than he was. He used these features to great effect, and this led to him being able to be cast in numerous casting calls. After the teeth were gone, he never lacked work again. He won Academy Awards for Best Supporting Actor in 1936 for Come and Get It and in 1938 for the movie Kentucky. But perhaps his best-known role 
was that of Judge Roy Bean in The Westerner in 1940, when he literally stole the picture from his old friend and pal, Gary Cooper, who played the leading role. Gary Cooper didn't mind. He was actually the first to congratulate him on it. And they actually worked together a lot after that. He resisted the overtures to star in a regular TV series, but he relented for The Real McCoys. That was a sitcom about a poor West Virginia family that relocated to a farm in Southern California. It was a big hit, and it ran from 1957 to 1963. He continued to appear in films and other TV shows during the series' run. After five years on ABC, The Real McCoys switched to CBS for its final season. The series was co-produced with Danny Thomas Productions, and it featured Richard Crenna, Kathleen Nolan, and Lydia Reed. The success of The Real McCoys led to a singing career with his unusual voice He made a few recordings, the most popular being Old Rivers, about an old farmer and his mule, that was released as a single in 1962. He went on to star in two other series, one called The Tycoon and one called The Guns of Will Sonnet. These were less successful. In 1940, he purchased the 12,000-acre Lightning Creek Ranch, which is 20 miles north of Joseph, Oregon. He built a lodge there called the Indian Lodge Motel. He also built a movie theater and a variety store there. He continued to go there between his film roles up until his death. Some of his family members still continue to live in the area and the motel is still in business. Now I'm not sure if the family members actually run it now, but it still actually has a website and is open for business. Walter Brennan spent the last years mostly in retirement at his ranch in Moore Park in Ventura, California. He died from emphysema at the age of 80 in Oxnard, California. His remains were interred in the San Fernando Mission Cemetery in Los Angeles. Film historians and critics have long regarded him as one of the finest character actors in motion picture history. Thank you, Walter Brennan, for all the memories. Rest in peace. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll continue to chase the classics.